Hey everybody, it's Nick from the Bootstrap Farmer and we had some Dutch Bucket questions so I thought we would make a little guide. This video is not meant to answer every question but just some of the more common questions that we get and if you ever need to reach out and get specific you can contact me nick at bootstrapfarmer.com and I will be more than happy to walk you through questions that you have or my experience and so here we go. This illustration, not to scale of course, just kind of gives you the general layout uh, which is concerning most of the questions that we have. So my Dutch buckets that I had in my greenhouse, I had six rows that were 30 foot long. Each row had 30 buckets. The 18 inch spacing in between bucket center to bucket center worked out really well for us. And if you notice, they're offset. And so the buckets on the bottom during the lower and lean process for vining crops would go to the left and the buckets on top would lower and lean to the right. And eventually these things would racetrack and we're gonna see some pictures at the end of this short video that kind of give you some perspective on how that works. It's important to note where you keep your reservoir is a little important. I wanted to keep the water temperature as low as possible. So we kind of sunk ours in the ground about halfway until we hit bedrock. And then we elevated the area around our reservoir with cinder blocks, backfilled that with sand, and then put a roof on top and shade cloth around the structure. And what that did is kind of kept the sun off of the reservoir. And then as we would fill the reservoir up with water, we would wet the sand down and that sand evaporating that water kind of gave us a cooling effect. So moving along, assuming you have a sump pump in your reservoir, it's going to come in through, we had a half inch PVC line. And this diagram illustrates one row uh, we had six rows, so we teed off at each row and then had a shutoff valve to control the flow and the pressure uh, coming out of the supply line. So if you were going to have two or more rows, just know that that blue line would extend all the way down to the bottom of the page and then tee off as necessary. From that blue line, we would tee off with quarter inch micro tubing and then tee off again to the two plant sites we had in each Dutch bucket. And at the end of the line, we originally started off with a cap but in order to flush the lines every now and then, we wound up putting another shutoff valve where we could blow the lines out and drain the tank if we needed to, or a variety of maintenance that was made a lot easier by having that second shutoff valve. If we look at the draining of the Dutch buckets, at the bottom, the buckets kind of curve around, and you'll see that here in a second with some product shots, but they rest over a two inch drain line. There's an elbow assembly and the elbow kind of sits inside of a hole that you can drill inside of the drain line. Keep in mind that the buckets on the far left are going to be elevated so you have enough fall to go back into the drains and back into the tank. Or some people prefer drain to waste. That's a call that you're gonna to have to make on your own. I recirculated, our system was small enough that we really didn't have any troubles but just know that there's more than one way to do that. So again, each Dutch bucket, we had two plant sites per bucket. And so with 128 buckets, we were able to grow uh, 240 indeterminate vining crops, whether that was cucumbers or tomatoes. And then you can also grow peppers and eggplant. In the next slide, we have just a little bit more detail. Keep note that those arrows are the direction of the water flow going into the buckets and then out of the buckets back into the recirculating tank. Up on the very top left, you'll see an icon for a roller hook trellis assembly that we will take a look at in the next slide. So as the bucket is on the ground or on a platform, depending on how you decide to set up, you're going to have an overhead cable right in the middle and in line with typically the drain line, so it's right in the middle. And you use this roller hook, which is a roll of twine on a spool that you can release by squeezing the roller hook assembly and just pulling the line down as you need it. I found that it was easier for me to just drill a small hole at the lip of the bucket and tie that trellis line to the bucket to kind of keep it tight in the beginning and then lower and lean as we go along. And this slide kind of shows the close up. We had our Dutch buckets elevated off the ground because of where our reservoir was, because of the bedrock, we couldn't get it all the way down into the ground. But this wound up having another benefit that the buckets were just above knee height, which made them very easy to maintain. Those micro tubings, they do get clogs in there. Some people like to run drip emitters. I like running mine wide open and controlling the flow with the shutoff valves that we talked about. And this was right before cucumber harvest. So we defoliated the leaves. Then we would clip the cucumbers 
and then start the lower and lean process. If you'll notice on the right off to the middle of the bottom of the screen, you'll see the Dutch buckets kind of cradling the two inch drain line that goes to the back wall where that four inch drain line allows for all the water to go back into the tank. And then you'll see the half inch piece of PVC running on top of the Dutch buckets and then the white micro drip and then the white micro tubing going to the Rockwell slabs. You can also notice on the strings that are coming from the roller hooks, the tomato clips. These tomato clips have a little ear on them, and as they hinge over the string, they kind of hold themselves in place in the string so they're not sliding up and down, and then they clasp together, which holds the vine. You get a better sense of the steel cables and the roller hooks that slide up and down the length of the wire. You can see the vines growing horizontally as they've been lowered and leaned, and then vertically as they go back up. And once they hit, typically the top of the roller hook is when we would do a lower and lean. You'll also notice one of my mistakes that I made originally with the greenhouse being bought to house tropical plants, we did not put a wet wall in. After we decided to convert the greenhouse over to tomato production, it was a little hot. We did keep a shade cloth on top of there. We did run the ridge vent, which you can see there's two fans. One is a circulating vent, and there's another one on the other side. And then the other vent that's just right behind it is a louvered gable vent that would push their hot air out. So we had an intake and an outtake for that. And then to the right of that, you can see the heater that we would employ in the wintertime. This next slide uh, was in the wintertime, so there wasn't as much vegetative growth, but this kind of allowed us to get a really early start into the spring. You can see the plants on the left were very very small. You can see the plants on the right, especially on the second row, have a little bit more growth on them and then kind of get a little bit more perspective on how those clips are tied onto the string. And on the picture on the corner of the right, you can see as spring came along that we really had a lot of vegetation, a lot of fruiting, and everything was very healthy. So this kind of gives you an idea of what comes with the Dutch buckets. It's the bucket itself, the lid, the two elbows, which actually get put together and is in, on the inside of the bucket. And then if you notice on the picture on the very far right, there's a little indentation where that sticks out. And that's the thing that you put kind of to hold it in place at the drain line. The buckets are 10 inches wide, 12 inches deep, 9 inches tall. And the picture in the very far right, you can kind of get an idea of the reservoir of water that's kind of always in there. And so as the water comes and top waters, your rock wool slab or whatever kind of media that you have growing in there, it always kind of reflushes and recirculates and then drains back down into the hole and then goes back into the reservoir. And this last picture is just a description of what the Dutch bucket actually does. And then this picture, you see a lot of leaf growth. You see a lot of tomatoes in production. You see the lower and lean. We had that three foot platform that we would lower and lean everything with. I really like that. Worked out really well. You can see that as we clipped, we kept a bucket with us to kind of keep the floor clean. The other thing that I wanted to note is that bar that's in the middle that has that thermometer on there. There's two thermostats. One runs the heater and one runs the powered gable vents. So you could set that. I think we had it set at like 90 degrees. So whenever the greenhouse hit 90, which was fairly early in the morning in the summer, uh, the gable vents would automatically kick on and start pushing hot air out and would run pretty much all day. And then, of course, in the wintertime, uh, we would turn out those off and just run the heater. So depending on where you're at in the country and the type of tomatoes you have and a whole host of circumstances is how hot or cool you're going to want. Not only the ambient temperature, not only the air fans circulating and kind of dehumidifying everything, but also keep in mind the temperature of the water is going to greatly affect the growth and health of the plants. And uh, that's our Dutch bucket setup. Hope this cleared up some questions and I'm ready for some more. So Nick at bootstrapfarmer.com and I'll get with you as soon as I can. Thanks. For more information, check out bootstrapfarmer.com slash pages slash incubator and scroll down to the Dutch bucket section and we'll have additional resources. Music